Joining me today in the studio to discuss the environmental threat from the ammonia facility in Haifa, as well as the ongoing efforts to shut it down, is Knesset member and co-chair of the Green Movement, Yael Cohen Paran of the Zionist Union Party. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi, Natasha. All right, so let's begin by talking about the ammonia facility. Why is the prime minister trying to keep the facility open for another two years, despite the danger that it poses to society here? Yeah, this is, uh, well, something very new to us. It only uh, the Prime Minister Netanyahu just uh, talked about it just a couple or three days ago. And uh, this is uh, quite obvious to me, a uh, very well, uh, well, it's very concerning. It's uh, very showing its connection to the uh, owner of the facility, of the Haifa Chemicals, which is using the ammonia facility and doesn't want it to be closed in Haifa. And the owner is American. I have to say his name is uh, Jules Trump, not connected to the president, just the same name. And, uh, and we all know he's a billionaire. He's very connected to Netanyahu. I think he's donating money for him. And I mean, Netanyahu referring to him as a good friend of him. I think Netanyahu should really not interfere in this. It's outrageous. The Supreme Court has uh, put an appeal, uh, answered an appeal about it. And the demand is that the ammonia tank will be closed by the 1st of June, 2017 in a month, in, in a few days, and uh, this should be kept. And that was also the uh, environmental ministry uh, perception and decision till very lately. Now, because of pressure from the high uh, windows, uh, I think uh, this is what we're fighting right now, and this is what we're facing. And I have to say here, the ammonia tank is a threat to nearly a million people living in the area with all the threats coming from Hezbollah and Nasrallah using it, and he said it, I'm not putting words in his mouth, as his uh, uh, nuclear his bomb, target, right. as his target, and this would be my nuclear bomb, and this is something really threatening the lives of so well, many people. Well, I think people. it's fair to say that people in the city are very concerned about this. This is not... People in Haifa and in the metropolis around Haifa are very concerned. This is something really unheard of that the Prime Minister is interfering in such an issue. Well, I guess, you know, the, the other side to it is that so many jobs will be lost when the facility is closed down, which is something that is of concern. We but don't want to see jobs lost. We, we know that there are options and there are alternatives and there, there should be a facility that is uh, in the operating in the south of Israel and manufacturing this ammonia. The problem is with the ammonia tank sitting in the heart of uh, almost a million people. And there are solutions and they Absolutely. should be met. And this is something we're saying from the beginning. We don't want to be people fired. This is, I'm from the Zionist Union, you know. We care about people's life and labor. So let's talk a little bit about some other major environmental issues that we're dealing with here in Israel. Can you tell us what is on the mind of your party more specifically? Yes, of course, uh, we're very concerned with the climate change uh, effects on the Middle East and on us specifically, of course, but we will be affected also by generally the Middle Eastern uh, uh, changes. And uh, we already see it. I have to say that with all the skeptics about Middle East, which I cannot understand because this is pure science, we see the effects happening now. It's not in the future, it's happening now. And we, th we see that uh, we have less water, we have a drought in the north of Israel where it's our water source. It used to be our water source. The Sea of Galilee would make everybody were drinking from it. Now it's going down and down in the level, in the water level. And the, all the springs around there and the rivers around there are lower, the lowest water levels ever because of the drought there for five years now. Now, now this water shortage in the Middle East and Israel is something that is kind of affecting the region as well, obviously. This is a major issue. but. Not only will it affect Israelis themselves, it will also affect Israel's relation with the rest of the Middle East as well, correct? Exactly. Look, what happened now in Syria, there's been a report about this two years ago, uh, and it's so clear for, for me that there is such a direct connection between the drought that was there from 2007 to 2011. There were t four years or five years of drought in Syria, and all the rural areas, all the people working the land had no water, had no food, a shortage of water, they moved to the city. That's what started the turmoil. And there are reports about it, serious reports about it. And this is something that has to be, people understand, has people have to understand the Syria issue is huge now and the refugees is huge and it's co co concerning the all of the world and it started from drought it started from water issues when you have shortage of water and so many people in the Middle East there are so many people and it's creating a crisis and this is inevitable and this is something that will be 
get worse and worse if we don't meet uh, the climate change, uh, you know, the agenda. So, if we so dismiss speaking it. about climate change, President Trump is slashing the Environmental Protection Agency's budget in the United States by a third, and he's even instructed the federal government to stop publicizing and sharing information that is documenting climate change. Now, how will this directly affect Israel, if at all? Well. We are, I'm very concerned with uh, Trump's uh, attempts to withdraw from the Paris Agreement and create a change in uh, all the science around it uh, in the U.S., and it will affect definitely the world. Uh, because if the U.S., which is uh, today the second uh, largest emitter in the world after China, will withdraw from its commitment to uh, meeting climate change uh, goals, it's, uh, it's really going to affect the whole, the entire world and the uh, motivation that the other countries have for mitigating uh, greenhouse gas emissions. And we're very concerned, and I have to say that Israel and the Middle East, together after Africa, are the two, the, this is the second area in the world that, according to scientists and experts, will be the most affected. And we, as I said, already see it and already affected by it. And what I don't understand is how can Trump change the course that the world has already taken from Paris and from before, but seriously, just from Paris from last year, uh, to, to take a different route and to mitigate uh, greenhouse gas emissions. And this is completely something that I think that uh, all of us and also around the world and in the U.S. should be, uh, you know, uh, mobilizing against it. Well, and I think, you know, Israel is a very small nation. We all know that we need to be protecting the land that we're on and taking care of it because... Uh, and, and the effect it might have on Israel security and strategic uh, interest in the, 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 all the very, very fragile area anyway, mm -hmm. you don't need to add to it anymore. And I'm not saying that this is something that will, I mean, this is something that will add to the fragility and the sensitivity of the area and to the crisis that we're already facing here. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Knesset member, and we hope to have you back. Thank you very much.